unity. It's a word that we constantly hear, and most people, including myself, state that we want more of it, right? We want more of that unity thing. But often, that's where the conversation ends. Unity. We'd like unity. And sometimes, it just becomes about the rhetoric. Could we tone down the rhetoric? And there's a place for that discussion. Can we lower the temperature, thus unite? Can we acknowledge where we agree while continuing to debate on what we disagree about to understand how we're all actually experiencing more in common than, than what separates us? But one of the things I've also tried to add to that conversation is that, that unity has to be about what you're uniting around. What is at the core of the unity? Not just it for its sake, but there's something meaningful there. And so what I've found so beautiful about the American pro-democracy, pro-constitution movement right now that is represented by the Democratic candidate, Vice President Kamala Harris, is that it's uniting people across policy perspectives in favor of a movement that says, even though we're going to disagree and grapple on these important policy things, at least we have to be a part of the same electoral movement for the time and respect each other's views because we agree on the foundational stuff, which is that constitutional democratic process. And that comes in contrast to the MAGA movement that has abandoned so many of these fundamental American values, which means there's some strange bedfellows. You have the Liz Cheney's, the Adam Kinzinger's, the Kamala Harris's, the Joe Biden's uniting, not sacrificing their principles, but instead acknowledging their common dedication to the foundational principles, right? That makes Trump very mad that that's going on. And I'll show you clips from an event that was held that was titled Country Over Party, where Liz Cheney and Kamala Harris appeared together. But Trump hates this because the very unity that I find so special is about what we're for, of course. But let's be honest, there's a big part of it that's defined by what we're against because it's a heartbreaking scenario that we have to say, hey, Liz Cheney, we're on the same side here because over there they don't even think we should have peaceful transfers of power. Over there they have a guy who's openly threatening the media. Over there they have a guy who's calling for the termination of the Constitution. And here was Trump being asked that very question about Liz Cheney's rally with Kamala Harris. Then do stick around for those clips as well, because it's really uplifting. But here's Trump upset by Liz Cheney. This is out on the campaign trail today with Liz Cheney. Your thoughts on that? Well, Liz Cheney lost for Congress. Uh, she was terrible. Liz Cheney is a stupid war hawk. All she wants to do is shoot missiles at people. I really think it hurts. I think, frankly, if Kamala, I think they hurt each other. I think they're so bad, both of them. Former President Trump also told us he believes the dock worker strike would not have happened if he were sitting in the Oval Office right now. He told us he would have gotten all the stakeholders on the phone and done everything possible to try and avoid this strike. Nothing bad would have happened if Trump were still president, is his argument constantly. Oh, yeah, the strike, what would I have done differently? Nothing, because it never would have happened. Russia's invasion of Ukraine never would have happened. It's the simplistic talking points that somehow hoodwink people that really gets under my skin. But there, the reason he doesn't have that thoughtful of a reaction which, let me pose before going further to you what I mean by that. And by the way, as we're going through this, do make sure you're subscribed to the channel by clicking that subscribe button. We're racing towards 1 million subscribers. Getting the word out. If you enjoyed the message or enjoy the message of this show, that's one way to help it uh, in a free way. But the reason that Trump can't refute what's being said is because he can't say, for example, it's interesting that they articulate themselves to be uniting with one another around a dedication to our constitutional process. Because while they smear me, I actually stand for the Constitution, and they don't. And the reasons why are 
and then listing off bullet points. But those bullet points don't exist, which is why he can't lay out a thoughtful argument. So instead, it has to be the childish, she's stupid. They're both bad. They're just so bad. They're bad and they're stupid and they're ugly. Uh. <laughs> and meanwhile, Liz Cheney and Kamala Harris are making more thoughtful reactions. Before we get to those, though, there was one funny joke that was made that less thoughtful, more funny. House leadership. So... In other words, I was a Republican even before Donald Trump started spray tanning. <laughs> oh, come on. Come on. MAGA, I know you went, ah, but that's funny. And you know it. <laughs> spray tan. I almost wish you would spray tan. Because then it would look more even instead of what we've been seeing lately. Even in this camera shot, I'm sure, you'll have these these shots of him. Yep, there it is. Where there's a... <laughs> former president right here who could be president again somehow. And with all the money in the world, he can't find someone, because I think he does it to himself, who could do his makeup where there's not a distinct line going from his makeup skin or his bronzer skin to his actual skin. And if he did a spray tan, maybe the professionals would, uh, would do that more effectively, but hilarious. Then we go on to other parts of Liz Cheney's remarks. Donald Trump was willing to sacrifice our capital to allow law enforcement officers to be beaten and brutalized in his name and to violate the law and the constitution in order to seize power for himself. I don't care if you are a Democrat or a Republican or an Independent. That is depravity, and we must never become numb to it. Any person... Any person who would do these things can never be trusted with power again. We must defeat Donald Trump on November 5th. The key part there, because so much of this you've heard before from me, from her, from Harris, whoever. The key line there is don't become numb to it. Because Trump's whole hope here is that that's what's going to happen. We're going to become numb to his insanity that will start ignoring it. And the most accurate term for what MAGA is doing to us right now, especially the leaders, is gaslighting. Because they're looking at us and saying, oh my gosh, we saw it on the debate stage. Oh my, you, you still care about Trump refusing to accept a free and fair election? Oh my gosh, get over it already. Why are you bringing this up? But then Trump brings it up at his rally saying it was a rigged election. And then we react to that and they go, oh my gosh, here we go again. January 6th, January 6th. And they try to make you feel crazy. Wait, am I, do I care too much about this? Which is why I come back to it so often. Because it really is everything. Without it, we have nothing. Meaning without our democracy, without a functioning system to make policy choices through, we have nothing. So the fact that Trump showed himself to be someone who would sacrifice all of that to hold on, hold on to power means rest of the political conversations, null and void, and then Republicans, if you're thinking, well, that's so unfair, no, let's talk about the other things, at least agree, that's terrible, we all can't vote for that, and then pick a normal Republican who doesn't have that problem. And then I'd love to start debating again because you're also wrong on economic performance related things. You're also wrong on border related policy as we argue every day. I spend a ton of time on issues other than this one because those are important too. But logically, this could be the whole election issue if the world made sense, but it doesn't. So we have to talk about a lot of things than this. When Donald Trump woke up, on the morning of January 6, 2021, his intention, despite having lost the election, was that he would remain president. 
Rather than accept his loss and concede defeat, he had spent months overseeing a multi-part plan to attempt to seize power and remain in office. He ignored the rulings of the courts. He corruptly pressured state legislatures, including here in Wisconsin, to overturn the results of their elections. He told the Justice Department to lie for him. He conspired to have fake electoral votes cast, and he corruptly pressured his vice president to take illegal and unconstitutional actions. He summoned a mob to Washington, D.C. with his lies, and he sent the armed mob to the United States Capitol in an effort to stop the counting of electoral votes. As the violent mob attacked our Capitol, in Donald Trump's name, as they brutally beat law enforcement officers, as they hunted the Vice President and the Speaker of the House, Donald Trump watched the attack on television for hours, for hours. There's few stories as disqualifying as that one, the way she laid it out. As I always say, sometimes MAGA attempts to, to reduce what Trump did by reducing January 6th and the build-up to it all to, well, it was just, it was a riot that got out of control, or a protest that turned into a riot got out of control. And, ah, that's bad, but why, why are you still talking about it? And that's why you always need to walk through, whoa, 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 while that by itself was disqualifying, the way that Trump used lies to prompt people to do what they did, to block the counting of electoral uh, votes, to to then sit by and watch it happen for hours, that by itself is disqualifying. But we also should always tell the full story, which is, and I won't do it again because she just did, but all the different ways, many that prosecutors have deemed to be illegal schemes, that he was, was trying to keep our process from functioning. And then we've been told over and over again by MAGA media and by the Republican Party that, nah, don't believe your eyes, don't believe your ears. Ah, no, that's okay. Well, what, but, but what about Hillary Clinton? And it, it really sometimes rattles me, at least, I was going to say rattles you, well, us, to the core. Because to learn that your fellow Americans, especially people in positions of power, who are misleading your fellow Americans, are that willing to look past what was so constitutionally disqualifying about what Trump did just because they're cowards. The leaders, that is. Cowards who won't speak out like Liz Cheney's doing, like Republican Congressman Adam Kinzinger, former Republican Congressman Adam Kinzinger, has been doing. And it's shameful. know that president that a president Harris that president Harris will be able to unite this nation I know that she will be a president who will defend the rule of law and I know that she will be a president who can inspire all of our children and if I might say so especially our little girls And that's just sweet. That's just, uh, just sweet. Then you have Vice President Kamala Harris taking the stage and saying this. And the tragic truth, the tragic truth that we are facing in this election for President of the United States is that there is actually an honest question about whether one of the candidates will uphold the oath to the Constitution of the United States. 
That is the tragic truth of this election, that this is actually an honest question that we are having as Americans. And I know the vast majority of us agree that upholding the Constitution must be a basic requirement. We expect of anyone seeking the highest office in the land. I know the vast majority of us, regardless of your political party, agree we must hold sacred America's fundamental principles from the rule of law to free and fair elections to the peaceful transfer of power. And if you share, if you share that view, no matter your political party, there is a place for you with us and in this campaign. This is unity that matters. This is unity with meaning. Not let's stop debating over the most important things so that we can all hold hands. But let's keep debating. Liz Cheney and I could have a great debate about most political issues. But let's acknowledge first, and especially relevantly in this moment, what unites us about our dedication to key American principles that tragically, as she said, one movement, the movement we're going against politically, doesn't dedicate itself to. And while in future segments, you're going to see me again just go, why, why, ah? In this moment, I'm feeling a sense of peace about, let's just, let's just focus on that for a second. The positive takeaway of a movement that's defined by its dedication to what makes the country special. And let's not allow the gaslighting, the lies, the downplaying, the rewriting of history to enrage us into thinking, oh, there's no hope. Truth has been so obliterated. There is still truth, and we got to dedicate ourselves to it. And that's what I think this type of event represents and i i'm really feeling positively about that let me know if you agree in the comments and if you want to get the members only bonus show where we'll be showing some footage of just a second ago when <laughs> we were recording this very segment and it'll be edited out for all of you but the power went out while we were doing it and that caused a debacle but uh, if you want to see that and bunch more on the bonus show you can do so by clicking the join button below